In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove eye bags in Photoshop. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we have this portrait image and we want to remove the eye bags. So the key to removing eye bags in Photoshop is dodging and burning. And especially for this image, as you can see, there is some harsh shadows underneath his eyes. And that is mostly caused by the lighting setup of this image because the light is coming from the top and is causing these harsh shadows underneath the eyes, as you can see. And we're gonna need to remove that using dodging and burning. So there's many ways to do dodging and burning but let's keep this tutorial simple and we're going to be doing this with the curves adjustment layer. So you're going to add the curves adjustment layer at the top and then increase the brightness to something like this. And then we're going to invert the layer mask and use the brush tool to reveal this layer in the dark areas. So let's take the brush tool. You want to also make sure the opacity and the flow are low. So I'm going to choose 30% flow and opacity. And then I'm going to take a small brush size. And start painting on this area underneath the eye. To remove the shadows. This curves adjustment layer will also saturate the image. So to fix that, you, you can change the blending mode to luminosity. This way, this curves adjustment layer is only affecting the luminosity. So now you're gonna keep on dodging the dark areas. And the goal here is to flatten this area a little bit so that the eye bags is less visible. So as you can see, just by doing this for a little bit, the eye bags is now less visible and the area underneath the eye is looking much better. It's also very important to not overdo this. So it's best that you zoom out every once in a while to see the before and after and make sure you don't overdo this. Okay, so this is what I've been doing so far. Now I'm gonna make the brush a little bit bigger and I'm gonna also dodge these areas to flatten it a little bit and also evening out the lighting underneath the eyes with the area in the cheeks. So this time I'm not gonna follow the, the direction of the shadows. I'm gonna start painting the opposite way and this will blend the light a little bit better. If you feel like you overdo an area, you can simply switch to black by clicking on X. And now by painting with black, you're going to bring back that area where it was. So here's before and after dodging burning. And as you can see, it makes a massive difference to reduce the eye bags. Now we still have some of these creases underneath the eye and it's going to be hard to remove them with dodging and burning. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer on top. 
and then I'm gonna take the healing brush tool make sure the sample is set to current and below and now I'm gonna reduce the brush size and now you can simply use alt or option to sample from a texture near that crease and then just pay it on top of it to remove that crease Okay, so now this is before and after and I just removed the small creases underneath the eye. Now I want to remove this big area and for that I'm going to take the patch tool which is underneath the healing brush tool. Uh, and the patch tool is destructive so we're going to need to create a stamp visible at the top by clicking on Control alt shift e And then you're just going to make a selection around this area like so. Okay, so now I want to feather the selection a little bit so we don't have rough edges. So I'm going to click on Q to enter the quick mask mode so I can see the edges a little bit better. Now I'm going to go to filter, blur, and then I'm going to apply some Gaussian blur. So I'm just going to increase the radius until I get the edges feathered like so. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to go back to the normal selection by clicking on Q again. And then you're just going to drag the area that you selected to the bottom to sample from the texture underneath it. You can click on Ctrl H to hide the selection. And if you don't like the first results, you can just undo that and drag to in another area to get a better result. So this looks okay. I'm going to click on Ctrl D to deselect. And this obviously doesn't look realistic. So I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer to something like 50%. So this is before and after. And that's a little bit better. So now the next step for us is to fix the discoloration in this area. And you can see that even better on the right eye. There's a little bit of greenish color underneath the eye and we need to fix that. So for that, I'm going to create another layer on top and then I'm going to change the blending mode to color. So with the color blending mode, I'm going to take my brush tool and then you're going to sample a color from the skin. And as you can see, there is some blotchiness, some red blotchiness in the skin. And we can fix that by sampling a brownish color from the skin and then painting on top of that. And you will see the color starting to change and we'll have a more uniform color of the skin. Another important thing, if you click on eye to switch to the eyedropper tool, make sure your sample size is 5x5 or 11x11 so that you pick an average color from the skin. Okay, let's go back to the brush tool and I'm going to continue painting that color on the skin and remove that blotchiness. As you can see, we have that on his nose as well. And in some areas of the cheeks. I also have my opacity set to 30%. So if you want to do this faster, you can change it back to 70 or 90%. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to also paint this color underneath the eye to remove that red. And here is the before and after. And the skin is now looking much better than before. I'm not going to paint this on the whole face for the sake of this tutorial, 
but you get the idea you can sample from an area like this where you think the color should be and then paint on top of the blotchiness to get rid of it so here's the before and after and that looks much better than before okay so now I wanna do a little bit more of dodging and burning to get rid of the inconsistency of the shadows so I'm gonna add another curves adjustment layer on top I'm gonna increase my brightness all the way and then again I'm gonna invert my layer mask by clicking on control or command I and then take my brush tool this time I'm gonna take a smaller brush size change the foreground color to white and I'm just gonna dodge these smaller dark areas also make sure to change the blending mode to luminosity so that you are affecting only the luminosity So the more time you spend on dodging and burning, the better results you can get. So make sure to take your time doing this so that you get the best results. Okay, here's the before and after of this layer. And now I think it's the best time to zoom out and see that we what we've been doing is still looking realistic. And the issue that I'm seeing right now is that it's starting to look flat and unrealistic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another curves adjustment layer and this time this adjustment layer is going to be in overall dodging and burning to bring back the shape of the eye so this time I'm gonna darken the image instead I'll invert my layer mask and this time I'm gonna take a bigger brush size and I'm just gonna paint on this area underneath the eye to bring back its shape so that it does not look flat and unrealistic okay let's zoom out yeah that definitely looks much better And you can always control the curves adjustment layer to see how much you want to darken this area. Okay, so I think that looks really good. What I'm what I want to do right now is bring back some of the texture that we lost underneath the eye. And we can do that by copying some texture from another area. So let's create another stamp visible at the top. I'm going to click on Control Shift U to desaturate the, this layer. And then I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and then High Pass. So I want to do, I want to start with a small value like one pixel. That looks good. I'm going to click OK and also I'm going to change the blending mode to linear light. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this texture to the top. 
and I'm gonna add an inverted layer mask by holding alt or option now you're just gonna take the brush tool I'm gonna increase my opacity to 100% and I'm just gonna reveal that texture right here underneath the eye just to bring back that texture we have lost before and if you don't like that texture you can always move the image with the move tool first you need to unlink the layer by clicking on this chain icon and then you can move the texture freely Okay, that looks nice. Now I'm gonna add one more layer of uh, sharpening. So I'm gonna create another stamp visible at the top. Again, I'm gonna click on Control Shift U to desaturate, and I'm gonna apply the high pass filter again. I'll change the blending mode to linear light, and I'm gonna add another inverted layer mask. And this time I'm going to reveal the texture on top of the eye. Just to bring focus to the eye. So this is before sharpening and after. And as you can see it brought back some of that texture and it looks realistic. Okay, so let's look at the before and after. So this is the original image and this is the after. As you can see, there's a massive difference. We got rid of the eye bag and the image is still looking realistic because we did the dodging and burning properly. We removed the creases underneath the eye using the healing brush tool and the patch tool. And then we brought back that shadow by doing some dodging and burning on top of everything. And lastly, we did some sharpening. Now you can do the same thing for the other eye. And here's a quick before and after with both eyes retouched. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's how to remove eye bags in Photoshop. If you learned something new today, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe to the, this channel and also enable the notification bell so you don't miss out on new tutorials. You'll also find the project files in the link in the description below. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.